presents this program in color. This program was pre recorded. This is CBS. Joe Cap to Gene Washington. The Minnesota Vikings used that combination seven times against the visiting Cleveland Browns and three times the Vikings scored. Cap found Washington on scoring strikes of 16, 10, and one yard. In a battle of division leading clubs, Minnesota was far superior on offense and defense. The Vikings scored on nine of 10 offensive series and befuddled the Browns on defense. Cleveland's offense, so brilliant in overwhelming Dallas the week before, showed no punch. The Vikings' tough front four pressured Bill Nelson into three interceptions. The final was 51 to three. Minnesota is seven and one. Cleveland five two and one. That he has to keep learning. Uh, it's definitely a, uh, a time away as far as uh, him becoming a top-notch quarterback. But it certainly was a big move on his part to uh, establish his first best game uh, in the last four games. You're going to continue on with it then throughout the season? Uh, yes, we think so. Uh, as I said, there's still a long way to go, but I think he at least showed, uh, at least flared well enough to uh, continue. And Sayers had another fine day. Yes, Gale is running like his old self. He's running with complete abandon, and uh, he just looks uh, tremendous out there. Now the defense. You awarded three game balls to the defense. What was your thought on their performance? Well, let's say it's been such a long time since we won. <laughs> And, of course, they just played probably their best game of the year, and they were just outstanding through the entire game, I think, through the first half. The other team had a, was allowed no uh, yardage at all. It was just an uh, exceptional game. They, they had at least four interceptions turnovers to us. They kept us in good field position. They allowed the offense actually to do the point scoring that they did.
quickly over to Herman and a nice catch. Tiptoeing down the sidelines. Del Morris there. Touchdown. Picked off. Intercepted here by Bruce Meyer. Giants ball, first and ten. Ernie Coy fumbles, picked up here by Jim Shorter, and look at him go. He may break it all away, but Homer Jones gets him from behind at the. After a Cardinal field goal, Joe Cap threw a 10-yard TD to John Beasley and a nice catch. St. Louis took the lead when defensive tackle Bob Rowe, number 85, to the top of your screen, comes in and intercepts a Cap pass. Watch 74. That's Fred Heron, the defensive tackle. Put the rush on. But keep your eye, too, on number 85. There he is all alone. There's nowhere to go but the end zone. A 26-yard touchdown. And as we said, St. Louis took the lead on this particular play, but not for long. Because it was at this point that Cap came back to take command. First of all, he threw a seven-yard touchdown to John Henderson. And then from the 39, the same combination. Fred Cox then added two field goals, and that was that. Johnny Unitas, who showed the way. First of all, a 15-yard score to Willie Richardson. Second cold TD set up. At their own 36, it was Unitas to Orr. Watch this move. And another one. And Jimmy turns around going all the way down to the 18-yard line. As we said, that set up the TD. It was Unitas to Mitchell for the TD. The Saints put six on the board when Tom Barrington went left. Begrudgingly in for the touchdown. It was a five-yard score, and Tom Matty came right back, scoring from the three. Steps over everybody, and he just barely makes it in. And now the final Baltimore Colt touchdown, befitting the United to Ray Perkins toss. The winless Chicago Bears got a break at home against Los Angeles when a punt hit Larry Smith of the Rams on the helmet. The ball ended up in the hands of Chicago's Gary Lyle at the 15-yard line. At the two... Gail Sayers bounced in, and Chicago led 7 to nothing. It was to be the only touchdown of the game. Center Mike Pyle let a pass get away, and Los Angeles recovered at the Chicago 32, and moments later, Bruce Gossett kicked a 23-yarder that put the Bears' lead to 7-3. to Later in the second quarter... Gossett booted two more three-pointers, and the Los Angeles Rams squeezed home by 9-7. to seven. At Green Bay, Donnie Anderson put the Packers ahead of Atlanta with a 16-yard touchdown in the first quarter. Bart Starr passed to tight end Mar Fleming, who went down to the Atlanta 1. From there, halfback Dave Hampton zipped in 14 to nothing Green Bay. Atlanta got on the scoreboard in the third quarter when reserve quarterback Bruce Lemmerman climaxed a drive with a sneak. Green Bay continued to move on the Falcons as Starr worked to Fleming for a three-yard TD. Atlanta tried to rally, but Herb Adderley intercepted a pass and ran 80 yards to pay dirt. It was Adderley's seventh career interception score, breaking his own league record. Green Bay, 28, Atlanta, 10.
New York quarterback Fran Tarkenden got a going over in Dallas last night. The Cowboys brought him down to the Cotton Bowl turf a total of 10 times for a loss of 70 yards, this time for a safety. The Dallas front four of Larry Cole, Jethro Pugh, Bob Lilly, and George Andrew was too much for the New York offensive line. Surprisingly, the Giants' defensive squad managed to hold the NFL's leading offense within range until the last quarter. Quarterback Craig Morton hit wide receiver Lance Renzel. The 16-yard TD ended the frustration of the Cowboys, who had to settle for three earlier field goals. At this point, Dallas led 16-3. Bob Hayes sparked the Cowboys later in the fourth quarter with the return of a kick that put the ball at the New York 28. Fullback Calvin Hill, the NFL's top rusher, crossed up the Giants with his option pass to Bob Hayes from the 40. Tarkenton attempted to bring the Giants back, but to no avail. They never got into Dallas territory, in the second half, that is, and this late aerial was intercepted. The unbeaten Dallas Cowboys started on the wrong foot in Cleveland. Walt Garrison fumbled the opening kickoff, and the Browns recovered at the Dallas 48. It didn't take long for Bill Nelson to put something on the scoreboard. He found Paul Warfield, and the wide receiver did the rest. Seven to nothing, Browns. Craig Bainham fumbled Cleveland's next kickoff, and the Browns recovered at the Cowboys' 12. Three plays later, Nelson spotted Gary Collins over the middle from the 10. The game was six minutes old, and Cleveland was ahead 14-0. In the second quarter, Nelson sent Collins long, and Cornell Green was called for interference. The penalty put the ball at the Dallas one-yard line. Ron Johnson cracked over from the one, and Cleveland pulled ahead 21 to nothing. Johnson's short TD marked the first score rushing against the Cowboys this season. The Browns provided Nelson excellent protection against one of the toughest front fours in pro football. Nelson connected again with Warfield from the 21 to Collins from the 7. And to Chip Glass, the final was 42 to 10. Despite the loss, Dallas leads in the NFL's Capital Division, while the Browns lead in the Century Division. They're likely to meet again for the NFL's Eastern Division title. Tight end goes to the right side. 
Otis Taylor is also to the right side, and Dawson goes to the air. And Garrett Clark across the 30 and out of bounds at the day. third down and two and a half from the 44. And Dawson hits picks with a pass and down the sideline. Inside. Dawson is flipped by the outside linebacker. Roy wins seven out of 35 this year. Stenero booms it there and it's good. And the city goes out in front and goes. Stenero kicking into the wind, gets it up high. It'll be returned by Charlie West, who takes it, fumbles it. And the city has it. Wide receivers to the same side. And here's Dawson being belted by Hill. At the tackles. Here's a delay to Hayes. Hayes to the 15 yard line. Now they shift out of the eye. Avanis to the right side. Dawson rolling right, throwing end zone to the five yard line. It'll be a first down. Right. Avanis is on the left side, and here's Garrett slanting in. He ran by Dixon, the extra defensive lineman who was put in there. And went right in from the five-yard line for the touchdown. Cap fakes it. Looks to throw. It's caught by Reed. And it'll be first. Cap gives to Osborne. Osborne picks his way in for a touchdown. Crowd reacts. Here's the end around again to Pitts. Look at the blocking he's got out in front. Or they make that as he tried to get by him. Quick snap and the quick pass to Taylor. He got away from McBee. He's inside the 15. He scores. From the 47 yard line. Kosaki missed him. McBee missed him. And a touchdown. In lift, as I'm sure you can tell from that interception by Houston. They're in that situation again where they have first and goal inside to five. And again, they like to stick it on the ground as much as they can from this position. Bo Scott is a setback along with Leroy Kelly. It's first and goal from the two. And Scott gets his second touchdown of the afternoon. On first and goal, Scott went in. So the score mounts to 23 to nothing. Take a look at it again from ground level from behind Leroy Jordan, number 55. Bo Scott has shown us some strong running this afternoon. Behind the block of Fred Hoagland, number 54, he was hit by Bob Lilly at about the one, but he still got in. Rayfield Wright is on the offensive line for Dallas. Morton keeps the football and he goes on in. And it looked like a busted play. I'm sure it was. He slipped as he started away from the center. He's going to give the ball to Calvin Hill on a sweep to the left. But he realized at the last minute that the Hill would be passed where he could make an exchange with him, so he took it and scored anyway. Watch him slip as he turns around. And he realized, I think, that he couldn't get the ball to Hill, so he just tucked it away. Well, that is the first Dallas score of the day. Making his block and goes across the field, and that time he wasn't as open as he was on the play before, but still Cleveland got first down yardage. Morin has caught four passes for 54 yards. Warfield's caught six for 72. 42 seconds left in this quarter. A first down play, the delay to Kelly. Kelly inside the 30, needs a block by Collins. Gets inside the 15, inside the five yard line. First and goal, Cleveland. From the three yard line, Leroy Kelly. Finally stopped by Jordan and Otto Brown. A 39 yard dash. It's a draw play to Kelly. A little bit of a delay as Nelson was anticipating a strong pass rush from Dallas. And the rest of it is just uh, run as only he can run. That's Collins down with the block on Cornell Green. Green rolled out but couldn't quite get to him. And Collins did a good job on a big defensive back, Cornell Green. Allowed the play to go to the three yard. Cleveland leading 24 to 7. Bo Scott and Leroy Kelly. Kelly this time, and he's got the touchdown. Leroy Kelly is in. 
making the score now 30 to 7 in favor of Cleveland. Kelly from one yard away. Warren has a touchdown, and Scott has two. Morton scored for Dallas. During the course of the regular season, in favor of the Browns, Renzo goes to the left, and that's one of the big stories of this game. Morton has been unable to get the ball to him. Hayes is on the right side. This is a fourth down play. In the corner, and it is intercepted by Sumner, and he is going to go all the way. The rookie cornerback with an 89-yard interception for a touchdown to make it 37-7. to Walt Sumner, who was supposed to be worked on by the Cowboys, does some work of his own. And here it comes again. You'll see him cut just in front of the intended receiver, who I believe is Calvin Hill, out in the left flat. Now it's Garrison. But Sumner involved in short zone coverage, cut just in front of him and set sail. That's Tony Lissio chasing the left tackle, 72. But he's got no chance. 37 to 7 now in favor of Cleveland with 9.33 remaining in the game. An interception and the touchdown run covered 89 yards. Sumner had run one back for a touchdown during the regular season. Rome holding, Cockroft kicking. 38 to 7 in favor of Cleveland. And back with the Browns kickoff in just a moment. 